Now I'm sure that everybody has seen atoms that look like this, where we have the protons and neutrons in the nucleus and the electrons going around it somehow. Now our job in this unit is to be able to go back and assign the electrons around the uh, central nucleus. And we're going to use a model for this, something called the Aufbau Hotel. Now Aufbau is a German word meaning to build up. Now the hotel we're talking about is a very odd kind of a hotel where it's kind of small in the uh, bottom floors and you get more and more rooms as you go higher and higher. Now the set up this hotel is that on the first floor there is only one room okay and that room is a suite so we're going to call that a first floor suite then on the second floor you have a suite but you also have three penthouse type rooms so each of these circles represents one room now on the third floor you've got a suite you've got three penthouse type rooms and then you have five deluxe rooms and you can see these are going to go up one three five seven and if we kept going, we go 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So each floor, there are more types of rooms. So on the first floor, there's one type of room. On the second floor, there's two types of rooms. On the third floor, there's three types of rooms. When we get to the fourth floor, we have our suite. We have the three penthouse type rooms. We have the five deluxe type rooms. And then we get the seven fantasy type rooms. Now, a second part of this that is really important is the idea that the rooms cost different amounts. And this should make some sense. So on the first floor, you have the first floor suite. Now, the second floor suite is exactly the same room, but it costs more. So this is our price chart going up like this. And it costs more uh, just because, you know, it's higher up, it has a better view, a little less street noise, things like that. On the third floor, that one costs more than the second floor or the first floor. The fourth floor suite costs more than the third and second and first. And the fifth floor suite costs more than the fourth floor suite. So that part makes sense. When you get to the second floor, where we have the penthouse type rooms, the penthouse type rooms cost a little more than the suites. They're on the same floor, they have the same view, but they're just nicer rooms. So because they're nicer rooms, then they cost a little bit more. The third floor penthouse costs a little more than the second floor penthouse. The fourth floor penthouse more than the third. Fifth floor penthouse uh, more than the fifth floor suites. I think I said that wrong before. So fourth floor penthouse more than the fourth floor suites. Now the third time here, when we get to the third type of room, the deluxe. Okay, the deluxe rooms, they're so nice that the third floor deluxe are actually up in the same price range as the fourth floor suites and fourth floor penthouse. So third floor deluxe, about the same price range as the fourth floor suites and fourth floor penthouse. So um, some people say, well, why don't you just call that, you know, the fourth four Ds, you know, but they're not on the fourth floor, they're on the third floor. So the third floor deluxe rooms are in the same price range as the fourth floor suite, fourth floor penthouse. In fact, it's kind of in between. If you were trying to go back for rooms, you would say 4S, then you say 3D, then you say 4P. Let me clear this off a little bit so it's easier to see. So here's a price range. And if I were going to say, well, what's the cheapest room in this price range? We'd say the 4S. What's the next cheapest room? The 3D. And the next one is the 4P. So 4th floor suite, 3rd floor deluxe, 4th floor penthouse. Now the same thing happens when you get to the 4Ds. And the 4Ds are in the same price range as the 5S and 5Ps. Okay. Now, the big idea here is to take any atom and to start filling in the electrons where they are going to um, uh, be in this hotel. Now, the electrons are always on a budget. And so one idea is that the electrons would like to go into the lowest energy the lowest uh, price room that they possibly can. Now I just said it real quickly that this analogy the price here is really the energy and the idea is that the electrons want to be in the lowest energy available room that they can. Now these rooms okay, are really called orbitals. Now let me go back to the very first 
image here. And the idea was, you know, we've always learned that electrons kind of orbit the nucleus. And that's not really the most sophisticated model, but it does work for a lot of things. And so, you know, instead of being an orbit like a, a planet orbits the sun, then we call those orbitals. So what happens here is, we say, well, each of these little orbitals, so the 1s for Thor Suite, you know, that's going to be a room in our analogy, but that's really an orbital. So the orbitals are the rooms. Now, the last thing about these rooms is that they are all doubles. So we can put two electrons in each one of these rooms. So here we go. It's saying, use green. If I had hydrogen, okay, hydrogen has one electron, and so we're going to put it down here in to the first floor suite. And that's the kind of idea we're going to do. Now, I can also have two electrons in there. So when I get to helium, then I'm also going to put it down here in the first floor suite. So I'm going to show one uh, room, you know, one, one um, assignment to the room as a slash, and I'll do the other one as a slash the other direction. Now that relates to something called spin. So, back here. So we have our hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron, so we would go into the 1s orbital, okay, into the first floor suite. When you get to helium, Okay, helium has two electrons, so that first electron for helium would go into the first floor suite, but the second floor, second electron for helium would go also go into the first floor suite, because that's the least expensive room available. Now when you get to lithium, that has three electrons, then we would clear out the electrons we have so far, and we would say, okay, three electrons, you're going to go one, two, now the next cheapest room is the second floor suite. So we go like that. Now when we get to beryllium, beryllium has four electrons. So we say one and two. Okay, the third floor electron, the third, the third electron would go in the second floor suite, and then the fourth electron would also go in the second floor suite. Now if we have boron, and boron has five electrons. We'd say one, two, three, four. And then the next least expensive room is the 2P, second floor penthouse. Now, if I want to go to carbon, it has six electrons. So we'd say one, two, three, four, five. Now the question is, where is that six electron going to go? And a little bit surprisingly, it goes in the second floor penthouse type room. Now, the idea was each electron wants to go in the least expensive room it can. So when I was here, okay, the least expensive room was to double up. And here, the least expensive room was to double up. But now that I have three different rooms that all have the same price, well, since electrons are negative, it's a little bit better to have these electrons in separate rooms before we have to double them up and that's actually called Hund's Rule. So the idea is if I have three rooms of the same price, I'm going to put one in each one before I double them up. When I get to the five rooms of the same price, same thing, I'm going to put one in each one before I start doubling up. So let's do the carbon again. So carbon is six. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you can see for nitrogen, I have seven, so I'm going to put one more right there. When I get to oxygen, okay, I have eight. So now the next the next uh, room that would be the least expensive is also the 2P, but I'm going to start doubling that up. Okay, when I get to fluorine, I'll double it again. And finally neon, I'll double it again. So let's clear that up. So let's say we're doing neon with 10 electrons. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and that's where the electrons are going to go. Now, let's look at one more idea here. We don't have to draw this big picture all the time, the price schedule. So we have a shortcut. So for neon, and we'd say, well, where are its electrons? And we'd say, in the 1s, there's 2. In the 2s, 
there are also two. And these two P's, there are six. And we call that the electron configuration. Now the electron configuration is the shortcut version of where the electrons are. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, that would be the electron configuration for neon. Okay, let's say we try sodium. This has 11. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the next least expensive room would be in the 3s. So for sodium, I would say it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And that would be the electron configuration. Okay, let's pick something a little bigger here. Let's jump away over to bromine. Now bromine has 30 electrons. So we're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now from the 4S, the next expensive room is the 3D. So we're at 20 right now. I'm sorry, that's bromine has 35, not 30. Uh, 20. So 1, okay, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So that would be the, what we call the orbital diagram for bromine. And if I wanted to draw out its electron configuration, I'd say 1s2. 2s2, 2p6, that gets me to here, um, oops, 3s2, 3p6, then I go to 4s2, 3d10, and 4p5. So that's the electron configuration for bromine. Now let's try one more of these, and that is iron. Now going back to our picture that we had, this is the picture of where the uh, rooms actually are, and this is our price chart. Okay, you want to do both of those at the same time. So 26 electrons for iron. So we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 electrons so far. Now let's go get caught up in our rooms. We just said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now the next electron, I'm going to change colors, the next electron, 19 and 20, go in the next least expensive room, so that's the 4s. So here you can see we're going to jump up to the fourth floor and put electrons in that S. Then we're going to go back to the 3D down here. So we are at 20 electrons, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. And on this picture is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 26. So kind of an odd little thing and that is that we actually jump up to the fourth floor, put in electrons, before we finish here. And that's because of our price chart, that the fourth floor suites are a little bit less expensive than the third floor deluxe. Now, if you were going to come to this atom, if you were you know, coming up because we know the atom is a nucleus and it's got electrons going around it and going around it, and if you were uh, um, encountering this atom, then you would say, okay, well, which electrons are you going to actually bump into first? Well, you're going to bump into these fourth floor electrons before you bump into the other ones. So these outermost electrons here, we have a name for those, and we call those the valence electrons. And valence has to do with bonding. So the electrons that are actually going to be involved in bonding, which is what we're getting to, are these electrons that are going to be out here in the outer shell. Okay, these are the 4s electrons. And that's just a quick view of the off-bow principle and the off-bow hotel.